Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be following a Bob Ross tutorial. And disclaimer, I am no artist at all. I don't even know practically what I'm doing. So we're just going to kind of wing it today. And it's probably going to turn out really bad. So, and I only have like a smaller canvas of what he's using. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to be doing season 24, episode 1. And I'll insert like videos right here of him doing it. So yeah, let's just get right on to the video. And I've covered the entire canvas with just a very thin, even coat of liquid white. Now liquid white is an oil-based paint that allows us to actually blend color up here on the canvas rather than working ourselves to death on the paint. Okay, so we said that he like covered like the canvas in like liquid white, but I just have white paint, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I have this like two inch brush that he's using, but like it's not the same as up one because um, this is like a painting brush that you paint your wall with. So yeah, hopefully this works. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab some white on there. And then. Makes you feel good in here. So let's start out with the old two inch brush, a little tiny one. Take a little bit of the Indian yellow, just a very small amount on the two inch brush. Load a little color on the brush. And let's go right up here. Maybe we'll have a beautiful little sky that's just full of warm colors that, as I say, sort of makes you feel good when you look at it. So you're making little X's, little crisscross strokes, go all the way across the canvas, like so. Just about like so. Maybe we'll have a little water in here. I love water. I think it's so gorgeous. And it's very easy to paint in this technique. Okay, so now he grabbed like an Indian yellow and I don't I don't think it had Indian yellow. So I'm just gonna use like more of like a mustard yellow because that's what it looks like on his like paint tray. Without cleaning the brush, let's just go into a little bit of the of the yellow ochre. Once again, we do not need a great deal of paint here, just, just a little paint. Go right above the yellow. Still making our little. So now he's like is using like this yeah, more of like a brownish type looking color. This. This does not look anything like his. I watched this video like 60 times, so I kind of already know what he's doing. And to get crazy, let's go right into the bright red. And still, we haven't washed the brush, just a little bit of the bright red. And right up here, making our little X's, little crisscross strokes, we'll add a little bit of that. And red's such a warm color, it just, it just makes you feel good when you look at it. it. Makes you happy, you almost can't help it. Just just sort of warms up your whole day. But too much of it will set your world on fire. So all we want is just a nice pinkish, reddish glow up here in the sky. That's all we're looking for. Okay, well now he's going with bright red, again, at top and bottom. So that's what I'm gonna have to do now. It just kinda goes like bright. My paintbrush looks like a sunset or sunrise or whatever. I'm going to take a little bit of the thalo blue and alizarin crimson, mix them together right on the brush. And let's go right up in here. And with that color, sort of a lavender color, we'll just, we'll just fill in the top of the sky. Thalo blue and alizarin crimson. And you can, you can take this to the blue side or the red side. Just sort of depends on your mood and how you feel. It's strictly and completely up to you. Maybe, maybe I'll tell you what, look here. Really? There it lives. Yep, you're right. Just a happy little cloud up here. We can, we can make the indication of a little cloud just by tapping. There he is. There he is. Little cloud. Little cloud. Oh, big cloud. 
So you can just let it go. Let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. But all we're doing is just tapping in some bait. Making little happy clouds. This is not working out. Three hairs and some air. We'll just go right over. There. Okay, so I just cleaned the brush and now he's gonna like go over it again. So now I gotta do that. <clears throat> Hope this does not ruin it. <clears throat> just to help. And that ruined it. Happy little clouds. So we have black, Prussian blue, lizard and crimson, little Van Dyke brown. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Really get tough with it. Cut across, get our little roll of paint. It lives right on the edge of the knife. Now you have to make your first major decision. Where does your mountain live? Maybe in our world? Yep, it does now. Our mountain lives right there. With a very firm pressure, just literally push the paint right into the fabric. Right into the fabric. This is a chance to really get tough. Okay, 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 I'm so scared. <sighs> Dry. Okay, so it goes like, okay. He kind of does it like right on the cloud, so it goes like. Up, okay, okay, okay. Ew, I hate this. Up, okay, bump, okay, okay. This technique is so fantastic because it allows you individuality. You use no patterns, no tracings. You just, to get you just want to show your technique and turn you loose on the world. Because the canvas is wet. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry, Bob. I cannot do this. Okay, now what do you do? Well, just put a little highlight on that mountain. Today, let's take titanium white. I'll reach up here and we'll get a little of the midnight black. I want a grayish color. So just black and white. Black and. There, just makes it a little. But I want to leave it sort of marble so there's a lot of things happening in there. Pull the paint out. And once again, our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Touch. No pressure, Shoom. and just follow right down the mountain there. But no pressure, absolutely no pressure. There, if you've painted with us before, you've probably heard me talk about when I was teaching my son Steve to paint. I used to tell him just to pretend that he was a whisper that just floated right across the mountain. And that way he understood how delicate of a touch so maybe that's a now he takes his uh, knife again and he starts to make like, little things in the mountains. So see, I'm telling you, it like blends in. Now let's make us a shadow color for that. We'll use a little white. Oh, a little bit of the, a little bit of the Prussian blue. Maybe just a touch more. I'm going to add a little Van Dyke brown, maybe even a little black in there. What the heck? Even put a little crimson. Ooh, I like it. I like it. That's a nice color. Just sort of decide what, what color you want your shadows to be, and that's what, what they should be. Our little roll of paint. We can go right up in here. And now we can begin putting in the indication of all kinds of little shadows in there. I'm going to add just a touch more blue to my color, just so it shows up a little better and you can see it there, there. A little touch in here. Every highlight needs its own individual shadow. If it doesn't have its own shadow, it, it just sort of lays there dead. It won't, it won't play with you. I am not good at this. You need. Tell you what, sometimes it's a lot of fun. Let, let's do this. Let's, you begin seeing things here. I like to have a lot of depth in my paintings. So by, we'll just put another little range of mountains right here. 
Just drop them in the same way. And watch how it pushes that first range back. That simple. Just put them in. Same exact oh, way as I we did the others. Scrape off the excess paint, blend them out. There we go. colors the gray color same thing follow those angles <laughs> gotta make those little noises or it just didn't work maybe this one yeah it comes right down like that there something like so clean dry brush and once again just tap this a little to create the illusion of mist down at the base and lift upward. All right, now, let's have some fun. Shoot, tell you what let's do. We just use that same old brush. I'm gonna take a little of the white, a little bit of that mountain color, mix them together, and I'm just sort of pushing the brush, get a little color on it. Maybe we back here in the background, there's some little foothills. And the little foothills can be made just by doing something as simple as this, just tapping downward. Just tapping downward. There. That's all there is to it. Gently. Little quarter inch strokes. Very small. Lift upward. It'll make it look like little trees that live way back here in the distance. Far, far away. Pulling straight down. I'm going to take a little sap green, a little yellow. Just tap the brush the same way. And as things okay, get Bob, closer to us, we begin seeing a little color. So we can just, I'm using the same old dirty brush. Just. Okay, so now he's grabbing a green. Okay. Just use a little fan brush today. Load a lot of color into the bristles. And let's have in our world some happy little evergreen trees. Just use the corner of the brush and as you work down the tree, push harder and harder, bending the bristles. Down here, ooh, we're really getting tough. We're just bending it all the way down to the furrow. So what he's now doing is taking a fan brush and then he's dipping it in. And then making a big long tree. And then he goes. Does this look like a tree? No. The tracing through it, if you like to do that. Personally, I enjoy the, the freedom that comes with not having a pattern. Because you can literally, as I mentioned earlier, you can learn to compose and create your paintings as you go. And you look at them, things, you, you'll begin to see things. And with practice, you'll be able to see more and more. After you've done a dozen paintings or so, you won't believe what you can do. Let's grab an old one inch brush. Maybe we'll have some bushes down here at the base of these trees. Just sort of push upward with the brush and make the indication of some happy little bushes that live right down here. <laughs> Watch here. Turn the brush over. We'll tap in a little color underneath. I know you're saying, Bob, you have really messed it up this time, but you watch. One of the most fantastic things about this whole technique is the fact that we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents because very soon, very soon. You learn to work with anything that happens. And it takes all the fear out of painting. There. We'll just tap some of that under there too. 
as you've probably figured out by now, this is going to end up being some gorgeous reflections that live right under that tree. So we just take a two inch brush, grab, and pull straight down very gently. Just pull it straight down over here, straight down, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. To make reflections, you should like pull it straight down. Just wash the brushes. Dip the brush into a little liquid white. Be right back. Grab a little set. Yeah, that didn't really work. Yellow. Let's go right up in here. What do you think? He took like a really light green. Okay, Bob. Okay. Okay, so this is basically the end of it. And this looks so, 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 so bad. But anyway, this is how it turned out, and it turned out really, really, really bad. Um, I told you I'm not an artist at all. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. So, yeah, this is really bad. I hope you liked this video, and if you liked it, make sure to subscribe and like and comment down below what you want me to do next time. So, yeah, bye. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.